They had seven children, all born in the decade immediately after slavery. We call them the Big Seven. Now we know that the, uh, Adam was the oldest and Tom, my grandfather, was the youngest. We don't know the ages of the others, but we refer to them in alphabetical order. So the seven are Adam, Bina, Diana, Fortune, <laughs> Lucy, Robert, and Tom. Those seven children of Charles and Rebecca Ford, those seven gave Charles and Rebecca 63 grandchildren. Of those 63 grandchildren, now some of you have heard this before, but some haven't, so just bear with me. I gotta, I gotta tell the story. Of the 63 grandchildren of Charles and Rebecca Ford, our descendants as far back as we could go, only two of those 63 are still living. One, the youngest one, is my Uncle Lawrence, who gave the response to the welcome. The other is my mother, Nettie Mariah Ford Gathers, who is unable to be with us. She is, but either she's in the hospital or she's gone home tonight. Um, her doctor said that he would either let her go tonight or early tomorrow morning. But uh, her three daughters are here and her granddaughter, Billy Maria, is with her in South Carolina while we are able to come to the, to the reunion. She said, go to the reunion, have a great time. She was registered to come and um, I asked her doctor if it would be okay for her to take a car trip. So he said, well, where are you going? He said, uh, Daytona Beach, Florida. He said, oh, our, our mom has COPD. So he said, um, it's pretty hot and humid in Florida. I don't know, but she, if she goes, she has to stay in air conditioning. So when he admitted her to the hospital last week, I told Mother Day, I said, Mother Day, Dr. Kumar I'll put you in the hospital so you wouldn't go to Florida. <laughs> So you have a sense now of who we all are. All of us who are Fords are descendants of Charles and Rebecca's, one of Charles and Rebecca's seven children. Now I need to tell you how it is that we almost didn't even get to Daytona Beach. The first reunion was in um, 1996. Six. My cousin Sherman is the reunion founder and organizer. Sherman, can you stand up? If not, wave your hand. <laughs> when, when Sherman came from the meet and greet uh, Thursday night, we got back to the room. Uh, he said, everybody knows me. I said, <laughs> I said Sherman, think about it. If it weren't for you, none of us would be here. Because he is the one who conceived this so many years before it even happened. And he is the one that made it all happen. So uh, anyway, at the first reunion, we knew about the seven, but there was no Bynum represented. And everybody was saying, where's Bynum, where's Bynum? The second reunion, there was no Bynum. But Sherman was just as determined to find Vina and get them to the reunion as he was to have that first reunion. So, now I'm going to tell you how it was that the other Fords got to Vina. Unlike Alex Haley, the author of the best selling book Roots, the Ford family from the Bowman Lane community in Colleton County, South Carolina, cannot trace its roots 
back to Africa. Our earliest known descendants are Charles Ford, a slave driver, and his wife Rebecca, whose, as I said, whose maiden name we do not know. Charles and Rebecca were the parents of seven children, Adam, Vina, Diana, Fortune, Lucy, Robert, and Tom. These seven, these big seven, blessed them with 63 grandchildren. And I've told you that of those 63, only two are living today. My mom, age 90, of Walter Bar, South Carolina, and her brother, Lawrence Alexander Ford, age 87, of Colorado Springs, Colorado. So that young man that y'all saw get up here with the white suit and the red shirt and tie, 87 <laughs> years old. Amen. Okay, it had long been a dream of my first cousin Sherman to have a reunion of the descendants of Charles and Rebecca. His, his dream became a reality in August 1966 when 188 of us from across the United States gathered in Walterboro, South Carolina, the county seat of our ancestral home. We so enjoyed the fellowship and camaraderie that we had that we had a second reunion the following August 1997. And since 1999, we have had biannual reunions. Uh, I told you that everybody was asking where is Bina and Sherman was determined to, to locate them. Well, the search for Bina's descendants began with a clue from my uncle, um, Harmon, who is, who is uh, no longer with us. But my uncle Harmon recalled that he, when he was a boy some 70 years earlier, his Aunt Bina would send a crate of fruit to his father, her, uh, her brother Tom, every Christmas. And my uncle Harmon believed that Christmas fruit probably came from Aunt Bina for as long as she lived. And most importantly, he recalled that the crates, crates were always marked Orange City, Florida. <laughs> and from this tiny bit of information, the family believed that Aunt Bina's people, and that's how they refer to it, Aunt Bina's people, had to be somewhere in or around Orange City, Florida. But still, we didn't know for sure. Furthermore, we did not know the exact pronunciation or correct spelling of Aunt Bonnie's married name. The closest pronunciation we could get was Desiso. <laughs> After searching Florida telephone books, city directories, and several sets of death records, Sherman found death certificates for Bina Ford Dessa Shore, who died in 1911, I'm sorry, 1931, and death certificates for her next of kin, her son, Lawrence Dessa Shore Jr., who died in 1965. He also learned that the Arthur J. Mack Funeral Home in Deland, Florida, had handled funeral arrangements for Lawrence Dessa Shore Jr. Sherman called the funeral home and explained why he was trying to locate the Dessashore family. The manager of the funeral home remembered the Dessashores and gave him the phone number for a Willie Dessashore in Orange City, Florida. When Sherman called the number, Willie Dessashore's wife, Elizabeth, also known as Doll, answered. Sherman asked if he had dialed Willie Dessashore's residence. Doll said, yes, he's right here, and handed the phone to Cousin Willie. It was March 20th, 1999. Up until that moment, the Bina branch of the Ford family had not seen 
or heard, had not been heard from since the late 1930s. After years of speculation and research, Sherman Ford, grandson of Tom Ford, spoke for the first time with Billy Dessashore, grandson of Bynum, get ready to cry, Bynum Ford Dessashore. That's heavy, isn't it? <laughs> A few weeks later, on uh, Easter, or oh, I have to insert this, uh, my cousin Anthony asked, asked me yesterday when we were at the Cookman uh, tour. He said, okay, so Margaret, now when Sherman came and met my, my grandmother, are you the one who was with him? I said, yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> so after the telephone conversation, a few weeks later, on Easter Monday, April 5th, 1999, Sherman and I traveled to Orange City, Florida, from Baltimore, South Carolina, to meet Aunt Biner's grandson, Billy Ruff Desishore, and his brother, Charlie Andrew Desishore. Billy, age 87, and Charlie, age 83, had only scant memories of their grandmother. In fact, <clears throat> they told us outright that they really didn't know too much they could tell them. I looked at Sherman when they said that. Sherman looked at me. And we were both thinking, oh no, after all this, what a waste. <laughs> we still don't know anything. <laughs> then, Cousin Billy said, but you know, maybe Willie Bell could tell y'all something. We said, Willie Bell? Who is Willie Bell? As it turned out, Willie Bell was their first cousin, the daughter of their aunt, Willie Ethel Desishore Taylor. Well, where did she live, we asked. Oh, right around the corner on South Convention Street. <laughs> Well, let's call and see, he said. <laughs> Doll, died, uh, Doll dialed the number and again handed the phone to Cousin Willie. When Willie Bell answered, he explained about his visitors from Carolina and that we wanted to talk to her. Willie Bell agreed, and Sherman and I headed out to her house with renewed hope. <laughs> <clears throat> Willie Bell Taylor Frazier, age 71, welcomed the two strangers from South Carolina into her home. She fondly recalled family stories her uncle, De her uncle Lawrence Desishore Jr. told her and his daughters, Bertie Desishore Mixon and Ruth Desishore Shaw as they sat, as the three of them sat on the front porch, on the uh, front porch steps on summer evenings. Uh, Cousin Billy Bell said the three girls, were, because they were girls and because they were young, they couldn't hang out. So their task was to stay home with, uh, with Uncle Lawrence. And that's how Cousin Billy Bell knew the stories that she knew about the family. As related by Lawrence Jr., his parents, Bynum and Lawrence Sr., were, this is a quote, were following the orange season when they left South Carolina and came to Florida. The family first settled in Wintergreen, Florida, but later moved to North Orange City, Florida, where they found work in, quote, an orange packing house. Orange packing house. Cousin Billy Bell's story finally provided an explanation for the words Orange City, Florida, stamped on those crates of fruit from Aunt Bonnie. I'm sorry, Aunt Bonnie, the center 
our grandfather Tom in South Carolina all those many Christmases ago. At the end of our visit, Sherman told Cousin Billy Bell that the third family reunion would be in South Carolina that coming July, 1999. She responded, we will be there. And they were there. Billy Bell, her daughters Dolores and Gwen, her grandchildren Stacy, Anthony, and Curtis, and her cousin Shirley. Curtis came, although he had to leave early to take his CPA exams. At the 2001 reunion, Cousin Billy Bell also brought her daughter Camelia and Camelia's children. She even convinced several of Aunt Bonner's descendants from Kansas City, Missouri to attend the 2003 reunion in Colorado Springs, Colorado that Mount Lawrence hosted. Willie Bell and her immediate family attended every Ford family reunion from 1999 until her death in 2010 at age 83. In 2011 and 2013, her children and grandchildren attended the Philadelphia and Myrtle Beach reunions. Willie Bell's children and grandchildren, descendants of the missing Vina Ford Dessashore, are our hosts for the 11th Ford Family Reunion here in Daytona Beach, Florida, right now. So, where are Bonnie's descendants? As Willie Bell herself said at the July 1999 reunion, they thought we were lost. We were not lost. <laughs> they thought we were lost. We were not lost. We were right there in Orange City the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Now, she really talks, and she didn't hold anything back. I got that honest, okay? Uh, <laughs> thank you, Mark. Let's give her another round of applause. And please know, please know that she has history books that she has in every one of these that details information that you are provided so that you can get more information about all of the families, all of the original seven family members, okay? Okay, praise God. Now, I said that we were going to acknowledge our elders. And here to help us acknowledge our elders is Connie S. Johnson, granddaughter of Adam Ford, and Etta Addison, great granddaughter of Adam Ford. Let's give them a round of applause for them coming as they come forward. and especially the Bonner family. They did a beautiful job. They fell three days. <laughs> I mean, they did it. We had a wonderful time. Please give them a hand clap. We <laughs> enjoyed them very much. We did. So right here, Allison, Good evening, family. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to stand before you, and our job is to 
give honor to our elderly in our family. And um, as when my aunt called me, I said, sure. And I looked at some poems and also went to the scriptures. I went to the scriptures first. And I'm going to read the scripture from Leviticus 1932. Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of old men and fear thy God. I am the Lord. That is a charge for us to honor our elders. That have to, that's not going to have to be the person in your house, but the elders. Because it is a command from God, and that's something we must do. And that is also another way that we get our blessing to be honored, our elders. Yeah. As the Bible says, honor thy mother and thy father, so that thy days may be long upon this land. I have lived to see it. I know everyone's grandmother was special to them, but God knows I had one. <laughs> and she was like none of them. Because the things that she taught us, I lived to see those things come to pass. And I used those things in my daily life living, and it has brought me a mighty long way. A couple examples. Your word is your bond. That's right. Manners will take you where money can't. Amen. Yes, and I have lived to see those things happen. And she will always say, always know how to get along with people. Always know how to do that. And um, with another scripture is that when the elderly walk into the room, we are supposed to stand for them. When they say the hoary head, that means the gray head because they had lived to get to that point, even though some of us gray early. But you know whether you're elderly or not, right? right? Okay, so with that, I'm going to make an attempt to blow. This show off. And I'm going to try to blow, Once, when I blow it, I want everyone except for our elders to stand. Okay? Then we're going to say hallelujah. That will be in honor of our elderly that is among us and for those who are at home as well. Okay? And I didn't know that. <laughs> that um, in my research that you blow the shofar from the side of your mouth. I didn't know that. So I was blowing it wrong for a long time. Okay? <laughs> If you don't make it right the first time, just give me a few tries. <laughs> So I'm not sure how many of you have lived even to see a half a century, but we have some elders in the room and one who's not with us who have lived to see almost a century. We have four of them in the room today who happen to be over the age of 80. And we have one who Margaret spoke of who happens to be 90 years old who's still with us. And that's a blessing. Yes, it is. Amen. So we just wanted to take an opportunity to give them a small token of our appreciation. We respect you. 
We honor you. We bless God for you. Amen. So, amen. Call the name. This first one is for our cousin, Birdie Desishore Mason. This next gift is for one of my favorite cousins, Lawrence Ford. Right. This next gift is for the oldest female Ford descendant who is not here today, but I'll ask that one of her daughters takes it to her, and it is for Miss Nettie Gaithers. This next gift is for the man who made this all possible for all of us, our cousin Sherman. Certainly not least, this gift is for Miss Jenny Roberts. just having a good time as she as she did at so many of these family reunions. And we, we miss her. We miss her so much. So for those who have just been honored, please know from the bottom of our hearts, the very depths of our soul, how much we love you, how much we appreciate you, and how much we thank God for you. Let's give them another round of applause. Thank you. Well, at this time, I have the great honor and pleasure of introducing our speaker, and he promises to be brief. So don't think he's going to be, he promises to be brief. Our speaker is Anthony James Asman. Even though I'm his mother and I know a lot about him, I'd said I'd jot some things down just to make sure that I said some of those great things. Because sometimes, you know, people have done fantastic things, and because we know them, we just kind of rush right on through that and just get on to the next part. So bear with me for just a moment. Anthony was born and raised in Daytona Beach, Florida. He was and has always been a scholar. From uh, Duke University testing when he was in elementary school where his, he tested beyond his grade level in every area to uh, getting the principal's award almost every year even in elementary school, getting straight A's, graduating from high school and Vanderbilt University in cum laude. Uh, we need a round of applause for that. I think that's awesome. <laughs> And not only did he graduate cum laude, but he got a full, full, everything covered uh, ride at Vanderbilt University for those four, four uh, full years. Amen, amen. In fact, we used to go visit him because uh, at Vanderbilt they had their own shelf. <laughs> so we would go visit him. They have great meals. I tell you, it was awesome. Education has always been important to our family. Now that was our mother, our mother instilled that in us. So it's always been important to him as well. He's currently working on his uh, master's degree in business administration and he should finish that in December of this year while working full time. Amen? 
He works full-time right now at Miami University in Ohio as Assistant Athletic Director, Sales and Marketing Director, and those positions he has held uh, for about nine years. Now, he will tell you that what he loves most, though, about his job and the job he held prior to the one that he's in now as the uh, brand manager and associate director for seven years from Florida Center Sports in Orlando is the impact that he has been able to have on young lives, especially young males. And how many of you know how key and important it is that we impact positively the lives of our young males? Helping them to dream what others may consider impossible dreams developing plans and working the plans to fruition. Now he did that in his senior year in developing a successful and much enjoyed alternate prom. In his senior year, he didn't go to the regular prom. He developed an alternate prom for those who could not afford to go to the regular prom put on by the school system. And he got the teachers to help him, he got other students to help him, and they were able to have a very, very successful alternate prom. He did it in college when he started a community youth mentor program and he convinced other college athletes to work with him and go in the community and be a mentor to the young men in that community. Uh, helping them with everything from getting their, their uh, going to the barbershop to learning more athletic skills uh, and doing their homework. He did it on his first job as in 1998 as associate director coordinating what they call the Gridiron Classic with Team Florida, Team USA for three plus years, doing which, get this, over 175 college seniors were able to successfully be signed to NFL contracts. Can I get an amen on that? Now, for those of you who know anything about Florida, we have something called the Florida Classic, where BCU and, M and FAMU play against each other. Well, he was associate director of that, which is called the Walt Disney World Florida Classic, and they had over six consecutive years of sellouts of over 70,000 people. Amen? Amen, amen. And he continues a lot of this even now after 16 years of working with students, uh, from the college, working with students who are uh, underprivileged youth in the community to give them the opportunity to learn, to train, to develop and experience life and job opportunities not really uh, usually envisioned by them or afforded to them before. He's a recipient of numerous awards, including being inducted into the Mid-Tennessee chapter of the College Football Hall of Fame. And he was two years in a row the chair of the Oxford Chamber of Commerce, and he received their Outstanding Chairman Leadership Award. He was the first black, he was the youngest, and he was the first one to serve a two-year term. They were so impressed with him. Let's get a round of applause for that. I'm very proud of this young man, as I am of both of my sons. I can say so much more, but we want to hear from him, right? <laughs> Praise God. But he has lived a life that's been uh, inspiring, challenging, and empowering to others. Therefore, without further comments, I proudly introduce the beloved brother of Curtis, our beloved son, who's a grandson of Witherbell Frazier, our honoree, the great-great-grandson of Bannerford Desishire of the Original Seven, our speaker for this 11th biennial banquet, Anthony James Asma. Let's hear it. <laughs> I'll be brief, but before I get started, um, and this is probably the toughest speech that I've ever given, uh, and you guys can learn more about that as far as what Willabelle Frazier meant to this family. But before I uh, get into that, I know this meant a lot to you. This weekend meant a lot to you, and uh, everything that you talked about, there's no way I would have been able to do that without your love. So what Curtis did, your other brother, I won't take credit for it. He got you a spa treatment, head to, head to toe, massage. I think the women say Manny Petty. I got coached on that. And we want to do that for you because I know what this meant to you, what it meant to Camille, and what it meant to Dolores as far as us being able to have Grandma smile down on us because we know what this meant to her. I'm 
going to need my cousin Stacy and Tamara to be up with, here with me. Uh, I've tried to write this speech so many times, and every time I started crying, uh, late last night at around 4 a.m., I started crying, got out of bed, Adrian didn't know what was going on, and I just got to the point where it's not about coming from up here, it's about coming from here. Yes. And uh, what I want you guys to know, and before I get into it, I want to thank Sherman and, and Margaret for finding my grandmother. This, this right here, this helped complete this family. We leaned on our grandmother for so much, so much, but we never could get to anywhere where we were going without knowing where we've been. And uh, when I think about this family and the strong women that's in this family, oh my gosh. I'm telling you, these two behind me uh, growing up, and our grandmother was our babysitter, as, our, as Dolores and Camille, as well as my mom was doing what they needed to do to provide for us, whether that was taking another shift. That woman you see right there, she'll work 16 hours straight for her kids. 16 hours straight. The one in the back is nothing she wouldn't do for any of us, the Lord's. And then my mom is trying to balance two boys before she met this great man, Larry, keeping us on the right track and having two black males, never being pulled over by the police and never being put in jail. I mean, please give my three aunts, my two aunts and my mom, these family reunions were so important to my grandmother. Three, three areas that was really, really stood out. The first one being, it renewed her soul. When she would come back from this trip, we all knew to get in line, we can get whatever we wanted. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, my grandmother was a really good chef. I'm talking about so good. Me and my brother used to put it in Ziploc bags and go sell it at school <laughs> with a slice of bread. Oh, the spaghetti was unbelievable. I'm telling you, them Italians been lying because us black people know how to make some spaghetti. <laughs> it also renewed her faith. Uh, it, it, it strengthened her faith to be around all of us. And when you think about us coming from descendants of slaves and where we are now, Oh my gosh. I mean, give yourselves a hand, little place. And I think at the end of the day, it provided all of us a purpose. This thing is bigger than us individually. And collectively, we got a purpose for why we do what we do and why we have to make sure whatever that last name is, it represents the Ford family. It put things in perspective for me. I want to give you a quick story about my grandma's tough love. I had a choice to make. I had three schools that I had visited, and I needed to make a decision. I got some insight from my mom. I got some insight from some coaches. I called up my grandma, she told me to drive over. I made the mistake, and I said to my grandmother, I don't think I'm good enough. She looked at me. I didn't know whether to run, because I think she couldn't have caught me. I think she couldn't have caught me. I get out and pray, because usually if you're praying, you won't get a beat. <laughs> but I stood there, and she stood there and looked at me. And she said, it can't be any maybes. You owe too many. Too many people have sacrificed for you. Too many folks love you. And I hope this is really hitting home with the young people in the room. It's the reason why we set this weekend up the way we set it up. It needed to have an educational component to it because we wouldn't have got where we were, where we were to where we are now without having some form of education. It doesn't mean, doesn't mean college, but it means something to make a living. So we had to go to BCU. We would have been selling this day short for our young people. We have to keep this going if we didn't do that. And we had to have a design that didn't have waves and sunshine and showing Daytona Beach. We had to have it to where it had the roots from Africa. Building this strong tree with all our branches on it. We complete now. There are no excuses. 
We just heard about a lady that had a dollar and fifty cent in a dream that built a school that's educating kids every day. That's why this is so important. And y'all gotta be honest with you, I miss, I miss some reunions. And I regret it, but I won't miss another one. And if I get another job, it's gonna be in the contract every two years, and the house is gonna be gone, right? But she stood up and she looked at me and she said, nah, you can't take the easy road because none of your ancestors took the easy road. So I went to the all white school. And they know, my parents know, after that first year, I packed up everything and I was ready to come home. On that drive home, mama said, nah, you can go somewhere, but you ain't coming here. <laughs> so I think I got back, probably, to uh, Chattanooga, and then turned back around and headed back to Nashville and toughed it out. But that's important, and that's why family is important. You know, for my aunt to send me a book about black men, and the first page I read was, you got two choices. One, you either work from the neck down and have somebody control your destiny, or you work from the neck up and control your own. And when I come here, I see role models. I see something that meant something to me. That first year where I was at the reunion, being at Walterboro, grandma grabbing me by the ear, because she said, don't make this feel like an obligation. This is a must. I mean, it really meant something to me. And it means something to me every day. So what I ask is, we prayed, we played, and some of you played a lot more than others. <laughs> but please understand, we got to stay together. There's not a day that goes by. All right. It's not a day that goes by where I don't think about my grandmother and the sacrifice that she made for all of us. This is how she lives through us. And it's amazing how one person can say something that helped bridge the gap for everything else. We're driving from Orlando and I say to Adrian, let's go visit the grave. She mentions to me, there's nothing at the grave. The spirit lives through us. My grandma's humor lives through us. We are some of the best storytellers. That's why we set the event up for a lot of get together so we can talk and share the moment that when we all go our own way Sunday after church, it stays with us and we laugh a little bit on our own. Right? Right. Hallelujah. <laughs> and those of you who knew my grandma, if you sit with her for five minutes, she got a story to tell that I make you laugh. I just want to end it with this. And if you can't say I love you, thank you. Thank you for coming. Well, at this time, the committee members are going to come forward and we're going to make some presentations. Amen? All right. Uh, Sister Dolores. Sister Camille. <laughs> they got so carried away. <laughs> You guys know that this is another one of the things that we usually do at our family reunions, and that's uh, we recognize people who, um, you know, did certain things in regards to the reunion. And we're not talking about the workers. We're talking about the people who were maybe the first ones to pay, you know, <laughs> the ones who drove the furthest, you know. Uh, all that kind of stuff because that's important because what that does is encourage others of you to get your money in quick. Uh, 
I'm talking now for those who are going to have this thing the next time, you know. And you know, let me just share this. Now see, my family are some of those that are the late people who are, you know, they will sign up late, pay their money late to come to a reunion. They got a taste of the burden that that creates when you do that. So I'm hoping that they will change. <laughs> Praise God. So this first gift is not a gift because she did anything particular. It's because of who she is and what she represents to this family. This first gift is to Margaret. Margaret, we appreciate you so much for holding the history of our family. In Africa, one of the most treasured positions in the village is that of the griot, and you are our family's griot. Yes. And we appreciate your tireless effort every family reunion to get information from each of us about our accomplishments, about our weddings and graduations and all the amazing things that we've had happen in our family. And if it weren't for you, we probably wouldn't have that information. So we wanted to thank you for all that you do for the Ford family at large. Um, I'm just gonna say that y'all clap like I said that Popeye's chicken was good. <laughs> Do you know how much history of the Ford family she has memorized and what we would not know if she were not here? So I think we could do just a tad bit better than that. <laughs> Them people don't do nothing for y'all. Um, so many of you, when you first got here in that hot, tiny little hotel room where we had the meet and greet, played a little game of family bingo. And I told you guys that whoever came to me first with their filled out bingo sheet, which meant that they talked to 25 different people and found out 25 different pieces of information about those people were gonna get a gift. And so this first gift goes to the first person who I think must have just harassed everybody in the room because she probably gave me this paper about 10 minutes after I gave it out. And that is Eva Addison. <laughs> The second one is uh, close behind that, and I just got her a gift because it was just so funny the way that she got her 25, and that's where my cousin Sandy Barnett. <laughs> now we we want to know you know, a couple of things about some people here to see if y'all might could win some of these other gifts up here. Now, who in here traveled the longest distance to get here? Ari, you live right down the street. So we got Kansas City, Kansas City, and I think that Cousin Lawrence got you beat because he came from Colorado Springs. Now, huh? oh, but you drove. Well, well, we'll give you both one. And you drove with a lot of people, so you might just get it. Okay, so who in the room has the most children? Here. Anybody got two? Nobody got two children in the room? Okay, what about three? What, what about four? You got four children in the room? Everybody got five? Everybody got five? Well, the babies ain't got no children. Stop raising your hands. <laughs> or brought them to the reunion. 
So I think that my cousin Tamara Tamika with her three, who, you got four back there? They got five, oh, five. Well, go ahead and get them people a gift back there. Cause that's a lot of chillings to take care of during a family reunion. So who in the room and for those of you who are immediate family and already know the answer to this, you are not eligible to answer. Who in the family is well known for growing watermelon? <laughs> not the immediate family. <laughs> not his immediate family. <laughs> Sammy can't answer, but you already got a gift. You're giving to somebody else. <laughs> Lamar, I didn't hear you, but I did hear jail. So go ahead and get jail again. Is she immediate? Yes. She is not immediate. Let me go home. Yeah, she's not immediate. She can go ahead and answer that. So the, the family members that live in Walterboro are not eligible to answer this question. So, no, she, no, the Walterboro family not eligible to answer this one. So, how many acres did our family get when the government said they were giving out 40 acres and a mule? And I know this one. No, how many acres? He had over 40. That's my damn <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, nope. Nope. Oh! <laughs> it wasn't five. Well, shoot, somebody in Walter Bro answer the question. Yeah, please do. Okay. In Walter Bro, Collins County, the homestead where Charles and Rebecca Rebecca Ford raised their children for a certain acre. Yes, it is. But nobody seems to know. So, historian, you tell them. 20 acres. So now y'all done learned something new. And the 20 acres are still in the family. <laughs> So who in the room, and this might be a couple of people, so whoever raised their hand the first is gonna get it. This is your first board family reunion. Okay, she got it. How many we got? Is it just the one person? Just two. Two. We had two. Who was the other person in the back that raised their hand? Antonio, you don't count, but our cousin, Mr. Gibson. So who in here, and it can't be Margaret, because I know that she knows the answer to this one, can identify the big seven and their respective colors? They don't have to be in alphabetical order, they can be whatever order you know as long as they were in. You can attempt it. Okay, go ahead. All right. <laughs> no, she she reading the name, but the colors ain't on the paper. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. I can think of that right now. Robert Ford, Colin Burgundy, Tom Ford, Bubba, Black and White. Um, vinyl color, lavender, purple and white, Lucy color, red, and Lucy is, uh, I'm going to say somebody I know. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, blue, and white, that's four of them, right? Mm-hmm. 
Get up on your family history before the next family reunion. You never know what people might be giving out for knowing things. So we're going to give a gift to the person who paid their money first. And that would be Miss Sandra Marnett. six past Ford family reunions were. Go ahead, Elijah. Elijah, raise hand first. Doc, five out of the last six. He can't get no help now. He can't, he ain't got no lifelines. So we have a fancy man, and I'm giving you a clue by telling you it's a man, he a fancy man, and he drive a nice old fancy car. Now his immediate family is not allowed to guess this one, but he drives a pretty, and it's a sharp car too. It's a Lincoln. It's your week. Get that man to give it. It's Lawrence. That man called Shaw. Now we have a family member in the room who's been in a movie or two. And if you can tell me who he is and what movie he's been in, and your name is not Sandy Barnett. <laughs> Go ahead, Dominique. Stop yelling out the answers if y'all can't win. Uh huh, what was the end? Huh? Yes. Go ahead, get it ready. Yes. Yeah. So we got a couple of young Ford family members in the building. Young, I mean real new. Who has the youngest baby in the room? And I think it might be one of our Desishures who we ain't seen since Colorado Springs, because this one is about six weeks old. She, she two and a half months. She tiny. She tiny. And she a cute little thing, too. I think that she have a five or six month old that's here and uh, what is it? What's the other one? An eight month? Six months and seven months. So that's our next generation, y'all. So train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Hey, yeah, that's 
12 years of Catholic school. <laughs> Remember uh, those who have gone on, and we know if they are a part of this family, we know where they've gone, don't we? Yes. Amen. Because we believe in prayer, because we believe in our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen? Amen. And we know, we know that when you live right, you pray right, you, you put God first. Amen? Amen? That good things follow. And one of those good things is everlasting life. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. We're going to turn it over to uh, my niece, Stacy Frazier, the great great granddaughter of Vinyl Ford, Desishire, and the great great granddaughter of Robert uh, Ford, Sandy Barnett. Hello, family. Hello. Everybody doing all right? Yeah. Well, you know, normally when we come to this part of the program, it's used to be just symbolizing by light a candle. So for each member of each group, will one representative come forward to light the candle? A representative from Bino, a representative from Tom, a representative from Robert, a representative from Adam. And I don't think that we have any Lucy, Diana, or Fortunes in the room. But if we do, a representative, please come up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So while they're getting ready for that, I'd just like to read a chapter, of a scripture from the Bible, from Roma 14 and 8. It says that if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. And you know, anytime you have death, uh, lose a loved one, it's a thing that stays with you forever and ever. But you have to remember that you can't wallow in sorrow because Lord don't mean for us to live life. He means for us to live life and to live life enjoyable. We will always remember our loved ones, but we should remember them in a more positive way. And always remember that in order to, they had vision back in the day. They had plans. They had enough wisdom to guide us through life and to leave us with something. They made sure that the that next generation from them was educated. We had, they raised a village then. People was the old people, it was all in mind. The old took care of the young. And they had a plan. And without a vision and a plan, we perished. So for all of us that's older, we need to take charge and teach these young people what we was taught, to pass that vision on, to live, and live life more enjoyable. So there's power in a name. And if you don't know that, the one name that you know has power is the name of Jesus. However, what we want to do in this moment is take the opportunity to call out the names of our family members who are no longer with us so that we can honor their memories while we are here to represent them. So if each of you can call out the names of your four family members that you know are no longer with us so that we can honor them and just take a moment of silence and pay them respects for all that they have meant to us and to this family, we like to do that now. Lola Bell Frazier. Lula Barnett, Anna Lou Coleman. Lawrence Bessinger. You ask me y'all now as well. Olivia Holmes. Ruth Bessinger. Liz Ford. Angie Frazier. Angie 
right. That's right. I'm in four. I don't work yet. I'm through four. Four. Thirty four. Nana Taylor. Francis Beaver. Frank Taylor. Donna Ford. Arthur Lee Taylor. Carmina Ford. Thank you guys. It's important that we remember from whom we come, from where we come, and where we're going. And if we don't remember them, no one else will. And I know my cousin might have said this earlier. Blood makes you related. But love makes you a family. And if we don't work at being a family, we're going to go down the road and all we're going to talk about is we got some relatives that we don't know, that we've never seen. You might be married to them. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> and we sure don't want that. But there is strength in numbers. There is love in these numbers. There is support in these numbers. And you guys have to remember what it takes to make and keep a family. And it's what's sitting right here in this room. Amen. All of those who can, if would you stand and join us for a moment of silence. In memory of those who have gone on. Amen. 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 Thank you. you guys, um, I just want to say this really quickly. I have two things to say. Um, first of all, I, my best friend lost her mom a couple days ago, and that was really hard because it makes you think about your mom. So I just want to say for everybody, love and cherish the people that you have because you don't know when they'll be gone. Um, the second thing I want to say is, in closing, please be sure that you exchange information with one another so that we can continue this on. Like I say, we're related, but we need to be family. We have people here. We have doctors. We have doctor, a doctor. Am I right? Yeah, we have education. We have, um, oh, 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 do doctor. Doctor? Doctor. Did somebody call doctor? Doctor. Well, we have a lot of people here. We have people who have positions. There's no need for any of us to really need for anything. We have all the tools right here. Um, I want to tell you a little quick story about my grandmother, something that stuck with me really, 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 really to my heart, to my core. My grandmother watched us, but my grandmother didn't raise us. She instilled in me when you're grown enough to have children, you better be grown enough to raise them. She would babysit a little bit, but she wasn't raising the kids. So she showed us a lot of tough love. She showed us love that you don't get everywhere. I was out in the streets and acting a fool, so I was just going to school and taking my time and easing through school. My grandma told me, you're the most educated dummy I know. 
She said, you need to pick something and stick with it. And I did, and I graduated from college, and my grandmother got to see that. Everybody don't get a chance to make a turnaround and people to see it. So you leave them with an impression that's not favorable. So Anthony spoke on education. I'm speaking on it also. You can change, you can do better. It's always better things out 